So we're going to talk about the ESFJ today. I'm going to provide you with the model descriptions by Megag and Ovkarov. Just go through the main bolded points, remove the fat, then I'll provide you with some video examples right away afterwards. Just as a side note, for the ESFJ extra feeling subtype, I don't have a lot of examples, but I do have for the other one, but in any event, I'm sure that the examples are good enough and to help you pinpoint them on in the future yourself. So we'll start with the extrovert feeling subtype. Um, this key factors to look for is that this type tends to be very kind and infallible, but obstinate and pig-headed. So this shows to be a tends to be a modest politeness, but at the same time very persistent. And which goes with along the next factor that they show excessive persistence when they talk. So when they present themselves, there's a talk. They are very talkative. They're emotionally expressive, but it's not too radical always. But it can be sometimes with certain different uh, variants of the subtype. So just know there's an emotional persistence when they speak with others. They try to be serious, restrained, and polite in dialogue, and often render strong emotional pressure. So this is also a very important factor. Is the pinpoint is that you know there's also this restraint manner of them but the restraintness is mixtured with emotional pressure or i would say more pressure oriented outlook so there's a sense of control but there's also pressure and willing to strongly present themselves to the world and make a strong point for what they're feeling or saying and how they express it to others um you know they can dress tastefully but also rather mod modestly they have quick actions and there's often signs of a radiant smile so this type of tends to be difficult for me to find, but I think the main factors to look no to just to come up with my own word to the best describe is that they are emotionally strong, but they're also very persistent when presenting themselves in the world. Another sign of factor body language wise or just body wise is that they tend to be very big at times and you can notice that they have this big personality with them so i would and it actually correlates with body structure somewhat so there is a big structure aspect so but not all the case i have to be clear that there are um controlled uh body shapes but i i notice that they have a very big attitude at times and um, you notice them yourselves. Other factors to notice is that they are very charitable, so they tend to be very kind kind of people. So you can, you, and, and they're very practical as well since they're sensors. So you'll find them at um, supermarkets, uh, usually often as cashiers, or you can find them in, in certain uh, nurseries at times. But th and sometimes they also enter businesses. So for the next subtype, um, introverted sensing. The key factors to look for are that they are very vigorous, efficient, and practical, and they are emotionally striking, but sympathetic and benevolent towards people. So the key word I would say is mostly striking, emotionally energetic, and it's very positive, actually. I would say positively striking, and you'll notice this high tense of energy, but it's also, it's not the same as ESFPs because this one tends to be more positive oriented and it's also somewhat controlled, while the ESFP tends to be more wild and loose in their energy expression. So with the, with the mind, they're also very practical and, and efficient and and um, other factors to look for is that they're self-assured and skillful, chaotic and pleasant, and create an intimate atmosphere with their dialogue. And therefore, they project tenderness. So there's also this tends to be a sense of kind of cute attitude to the world. It's almost naive in a way, but it's very cute in expressing themselves in a very uh, gleeful way. In a very uh, gleeful is probably the best word to describe it, um, which is uh, combined with their self assertion self assertness to create a very intimate atmosphere. They act very nicely and courteously towards others, so they're very polite people and they rarely show a angry side to themselves, but they are very um, extremely extremely nice, and that's why they're usually very good um, uh, morning hosts or interviewers. Their speech, as a rule, is fast and emotional, and they present themselves in a very restless manner, and they're very cheerful, and their mimic, mimic so their facial express, expression demonstrates liveliness. So just a quick overview, they're very cheerful, that's probably a key word, they're very Celtish in a way, very uh, nice, very efficient, emotionally striking and positive. That's the best aspects, and for noticing this type, just know that they're oftentimes, um, it can be in nurseries, uh, they're usually very good at uh, morning news hosts, at local news stations, you can, and you can also find them in all aspects um, that involves um, people oriented and helping other people out, since that's 
tends to bestly describe them. So those are the two uh, personalities for the ESFJs. Just know that the extroverted feeling sense uh, type is mostly strong, persistent, um, and is very kind as well, while the introverted sensing tends to be cautish, emotionally striking, and positive oriented. Uh, so I'll leave you with the video examples, and I hope this helps you spot them in, your, in the future yourself. Well, I I didn't know. I've been with my husband, Larry, since I'm 18. Oh, wow. So, nice guy. I met him. Thank Great. you very much. Yeah, he's the best. Um, I always say I wouldn't be where I am without him because he's allowed me. I always say he picked up where my mom left off, right. you know? What do you... A lot of respect for John Edward. I feel... I look at John Edward. I look up to him. He's doing what you do. Yeah, but I feel he really opened the door for... Uh, I feel for myself. Um, I only speak about myself because he put himself out there first doing television and I have a lot of respect for John Edward. No. When I growing up, I did because I feel things because what just happened now <clears throat> and it's interesting that you asked me that because I feel spirit. So they will make me feel how they felt uh, either during their passing or through an illness. And what happened is someone just restricted my throat area. So what happens is I actually feel as if I'm being choked for a split second. So it's actually someone restricts my throat. Do you ever say to yourself, why me? Oh, for years I said that. When I first found out How that I had this gift, I said, why me? I'm no different than anybody else. And I just, I had my own little... Um, What's your theory? Conversation with God, if I might say, that um, I was told that this was my soul's journey, to be able to restore people's faith in whatever it may be. Whether it be a religion or, more importantly, the faith in themselves and knowing that there truly is more to life. To a couple of times, yes. but you know what? The apologies are over. I'm moving on. Um, people are going to judge me on a proven track record. And that's why I'm down here where I want people to come to Toronto. See how good Toronto is. We have the TIFF. Toronto is a great city. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's, when I walked on the streets on Hollywood Boulevard, people came up to me and um, very gracious. I want to thank them for being so kind to me. And uh, People so were very excited to see you around here, weren't they? A lot, it was exciting. It was a lot of fun. Um, met a lot of interesting people. And, and Toronto is booming right now. Our, the tax increase has only been 1.5%, lower than any tax increase compared to any North American city our size. Um, there's no more garbage strikes. There's no more TTC strikes. Um, and I, we are saving money, and the, it is booming. We have 150 cranes in the sky. I'm a businessman, Jimmy. I run it like a business, no nonce, and came up empty-handed. I just want him to come clean with the taxpayers. How much money has he spent? It's all politics. You know what it comes down to, Jimmy? I support the police like no other. But when, they, when they're doing these, playing these political games, and our friends of my opponents, and they're spending millions of dollars, following me around and come up empty-handed, um, that bothers me. And I just want him to come clean and say, I spent this much. But you know what? Um, he does what he does, and I do what I do. They and that you have bad around him and who give him right. bad, bad you know, suggestions, you, know, you wind up with a bad result. And you know, what I was trying to do when I was around him was trying to put good stuff in front of him and trying to move him in another direction. I know how hard it is to move him. I've known him for a long time. But part of why I did what I did was to try to give him right. some better choices. I get that. And, you know, there were other people around him that didn't want that. Great, excuse me. Let's be clear okay. on this one, okay? It was three people. Mm. It was three people, and three investigations came to the same result, that it was three people. Okay. I, and so I don't want to get... No, I don't want to get into that either. I understand, but the point is, though, I don't want to shorthand it and have people walk away with the wrong impression. But I'm still accountable for it. Okay. Because two of those three people so, I put in place. So, you, you know, so, you have to take accountability for him to be calling this a witch hunt. It's dumb for him to do it. And one of the things I said to him way back in February of 17 was there, there's no way to make this shorter, but there's lots of ways to make it longer. And poking the bear and calling it a witch hunt and calling them bad people just makes it longer. And when, it's a wrong but, thing to do. I mean, the FBI, you still... Just because somebody's doing something stupid... My mother taught me this. Just because someone's doing something stupid doesn't mean you have to do something stupid. And so the president says no, that. No, but you don't have I, to stand with the stupid well, people. But, but wait a second. But you, you can stand with people on certain things and be against them on others. So when he says things about Mueller, I'm on TV almost every Sunday. That's so and I'm saying it's wrong. And when you it's a good thing, I think, because I get to go home to my family. And I'm not a jury house just hanging out there. I get to, you know, experience everything that everyone else has experienced, all the viewers. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. You know, I think that basically... I surprised myself, like, you know, when they have the mental challenges, the physical challenges, I was, you know, you have a bit of doubt and insecurity. And when I did well in some challenges, like, hey, I could do this. And so I'm really proud of myself in so many different ways. And even just being there, you know, you overcome so much. I... 
put two strong players and hopefully other people will see them as a threat. And then if, if, if that didn't go well, maybe I could work with them or just get some attention. Like, hey guys, I'm here too. Because yeah. there's some beautiful women and obviously because now there's showmances. But, you know, I figure if I put the two strong players, other people will follow. And I didn't think it would turn out the way it did, but... You know, I was I thought it was a good move. And do you feel like I look at Emma like this hunky guy and I saw Tom, who's they're both buff guys. And I was kinda wanting to be a floater and be be behind the scenes, but as soon as I walked in I figured I'm kinda like the odd man out <laughs> and people be watching me and and uh, no one knows what I'm capable of. So they underestimated me, I think. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. for having us. You actually <laughs> met at an auction, correct? Yes, yes. I got that auction fever and I couldn't leave until I had the auctioneer. So, and, and, so. You, and you had him. 16 <laughs> yeah. years ago. 16 yes. years ago. I met her three times, one time a year for three years in a row. And I'm so tenacious. The third year, I just, I said, man, if you weren't attached, I'd snatch you up. And she said, here's my number. And she never left. Oh, yeah. Right. There was it's magic. Right. And there you yeah. go. And, and there he, you go. And he closed you so quick, you didn't even know if you were engaged or you <laughs> bought a new car. That's true. Uh, yeah. All right, so, uh, Dan, you, and you've been an auctioneer your whole life. Well, I've got 25, I've got 35, I've got 25 here, 35 there, 45, yeah. from a 45 right there, from a 55, from a 55, so we're going once, twice, got to go guess what, and I well, sold that your way for $45 right there. You just bought Joel, I'll pull that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, a, that's a bargain. Don't forget to pay the lady. Right, thank you very much. All right, so, Laura, tell me about Storage yes. Wars. You'll get this thing, and it's yes. like, what's behind that door? You don't know what's in it. Yeah. It's have something yeah. in it, and yeah. it's just uh, up to the buyer to see if it's good or if it's bad. Is it quality? Do the people have pride and ownership? Do they, do they, do they they love and pay good money for what mm -hmm. was in there, or, yeah. or is it old stained mattresses? And okay, you'll have an idea of um, if you're a smart buyer, you will ask the managers or the auctioneers, how long has that unit been here? How long has it been in debt? And they've been locked out of it. Once that unit opens up, you can look. Is there dust on those boxes? Nobody's been in here to retrieve anything good. How does it smell? Is everything sealed? Is there footprints in and out of that unit if there's dust? And, and we say five minutes, yeah. but you can have all the time you need. You right. know, as soon as you've looked at the front of that and everybody's done, then we go ahead and sell it for cash. Who's ever got the most money can buy it. And haul it away. Yeah. All right, so uh, so Dan, you know, you can buy real estate or cars mm -hmm. or anything at auction, and if you want something, you should. Yeah, you know what? Don't be afraid to call your auctioneer, and we will come appraise that for you. And if you've got more items, we'll let you know. And you want a big auction, we will set it up. Craigslist, eBay, yes. it's very easy to do completed yeah. listings and find out what things are worth. So if you have stuff around your house and you don't know what it's worth, you should just research it. And, yes. and the, internet makes, the internet makes it super you simple. You ever buy anything new? Oh boy, I have to really twist his arm. I have to take him to show him the most expensive thing. So finally, I'll work my way down. Thanks he goes, switch. it'll come up That's in a unit, he says. <laughs> so. Alongside Camille Ross. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Are there words for oh, how excited goodness. we are? So much rehearsing, and now we're like finally here, and I couldn't be more excited, and I couldn't be more excited to be sitting here beside you, oh, Richard. Oh, thank you. And I and I sitting beside you, Camille. Thank you. Uh, it is so exciting, so thrilling. It's like breathtaking. <laughs> New morning show. It's uh, for Montreal. It is absolutely uh, amazing uh, to be part of this project, so generously supported by our parent company, Shaw. They're actually launching a morning show today as well in Halifax. Go Halifax. Go mostly Montreal, but luck, go Halifax, Halifax as well. Uh, um, and this is a show that will inform you, entertain you, enlighten you, amuse you, engage you, involve you. It is a show built by Montrealers for Montrealers. And over the course of the morning, we're going to be showing you the Montrealers who are behind Global Montreal Morning News. And over the course of the morning, too, we've got a number of special guests coming in. We have Yolan James coming in. We also have Interim Mayor Michael Applebaum, as well as our News Director, Karen McDonald, and our 6 o'clock anchor, Jamie Orchard. Looking forward to speaking to all of them this morning. Sit, and ever since he told me that he hated it, I do it even more, because he hates it. Okay. Yeah, I always hear you call, if, if, whether I hear Howie or I hear Boo, it's one or the other. Howie or Boo, one of those. But Howie was my pet name, and when he told me he didn't like it, I was like, good, that's it. All right, Ken's I thought that it was all that I expected. I expected to play a game, and I expected it to be hard. I did not expect it to be personal. But, um, you know, that's just it. I'll say that I'm not a starter, but I'm a finisher. And um, I had a lot of starting with me, and I finished it. Not some of my most proudest moments, but um, I did have really good people inside the house to help me, such as Howie, Helen, Alyssa. And um, that got me through, and um, it, it was a growing I think experience just for everyone that was involved this season. Yeah, so you know what I did? I'm a very black and white person physically, but also literally. Um, I'm, you know, hot and cold, on or off. I'm in or out. That's what people tell me in my personal life. I'm 23. I'm a nurse and I'm from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So what made you want to audition for Big Brother? Why not? Um, who won? Who doesn't want half a million dollars? 
I'm a huge fan of the show. I love the competitions. I love the actual, like, you live in a house and you have to compete for everything. I love that. I love the game, everything about it. So Great. So on, is your strategy social, physical, alliance, floater? All the above. Yeah? Check. Um, definitely a social game in the beginning. I'm going to lay low. I'm gonna, I don't want to seem a threat. I know I'm smart and I know I'm competitive, like athletic. Mm. You, I don't want to target. I'm not playing my cards too soon. Of course, y'all will all know what I'm thinking, especially in the diary room. Mm. I will let it all out there, but not until about weeks 10 or 9, uh -huh. and then I'm going to start coming out and like really showing okay. and like winning. The line. I'm definitely going to, like, how you see me now is how I'm going to play the game. I'm going to be exactly real in the house as I am outside. Um, I'm not going to lose my morals or my integrity for the game, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to play smart or I'm not going to play strategically. I'm not going to lie or I'm not going to personally attack people, but um, I'm not going to do a showmance. If y'all do see me have a romance on the show, it's because there are real feelings mm -hmm. and that that is real. Um, I'm not going to do something fake, but I will align with a guy like Brittany Elaine, like if it is a friend, because guess what? The guys, every time, go home. The guys are the bigger target. Yeah. So, I mean, if I do do that, it's benefiting me in that sense. So, All right. Great. Yeah.